Hello viewers, four DIYers here, back with another tutorial video for everyone. Now in this particular video here, I'll be doing a demonstration on how to troubleshoot the airflow meter here, uh, which is found on the older model BMWs. Now this particular car here I'm working on is a 1984 BMW 733i, and he's equipped with the inline six cylinder. Now one method to determine if the airflow meter does need to be calibrated here, what we'll do when the vehicle is running, we'll be pushing the flapper in the inside of this airflow meter inwards to see if it does affect the vehicle's idle or RPM. First we want to start by doing here, as you can see I've already done this in the video, is remove this rubber elbow here which goes from the airbox to the airflow meter and next what we also want to do is disconnect the O2 sensor. Now the reason we want to disconnect the O2 sensor is so that when we are pushing this flap in and the vehicle does have to be at full optimum operating temperature, you want to make sure that the computer does put this in a open loop so therefore with the O2 sensor disconnected and when you're pushing the flapper in, the computer won't try to change the values in order to make the adjustment there. So you're basically almost uh, fooling the computer or putting out a false reading. So just you can see here where this orange wire is, it's directly located on the firewall here on the passenger side. You see there's a yellow plug there and you have a black spade connector on the opposite side. We want to just unplug that. Now it does have a single wire going to it. Now depending on your vehicle will depend on uh, the locations, it may vary slightly. Now just to show you a close-up of the flapper here, basically the engine isn't running currently, but I'll just show you in a minute what the difference it does. And then again, you do have to make sure the engine is up at full operating temperature in order to do this test. So you can see here when you do push on this flapper, you can see it does move inward and then spring back into its outward position. Now when you are doing this test, you want to make sure there is no debris or anything loose that could get sucked up into the intake because that could cause harm to your motors. Now with the engine at full operating temperature, what we're going to do here is we're going to go inside and push this flap there and you will notice that it will make the engine rev up more and then smoothen out. Now it's not doing it right now, but just before I started the video here, there was some slight stuttering during the idle. Now I do have a high idle issue right at the moment here, so it might be a little different on your vehicle. Now, I only pushed in the flap, I would say roughly about that much. It wasn't very much, but it does make a difference in the idle. So what we'll do is we'll take this apart and then recalibrate it. Once you have the airflow meter removed from the car, you'll see we have this plug on the bottom side here. Now that I have it exposed, you can get a better look at it. Now we will have numbers across the top side here, and each of these numbers go to different functions inside the airflow meter, or serve a different purpose. Now starting with the top here with these numbers, we'll have 6, 9, 7, and 22. So again, we'll start from the left and go to the right. So the first pin here is the ground. The next pin here is the input voltage for the DME. The next one here, which is number seven, is the output voltage for the DME. And finally, the last one here, which is 22, is the temperature sensor uh, reading. Now, first what we'll start by doing here is testing the temperature sensor in the airflow meter. Now, for the temperature sensor here, we want to use the two outside terminals here, which is six and 22. And basically what we're looking for is a reading here uh, between 1,450 and 3,300 ohms. Now, when set in the ohm meter here, you want it on the 1,000 mark, so we're able to view that reading. And normally the temperature for testing uh, would be between 15 to 30 degrees Celsius or 59 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, when I did do the testing in the past here, uh, just throughout the day, I did notice the temperature fluctuate as the uh, day became warmer or cooler, just to show you here. So you can see we do have an 18, 1870 ohms roughly on here. Now, just to show you in a minute here, I'll show you the difference in fluctuation here when we actually do apply uh, some heat. Now this can be done with either a hair dryer or a heat gun. Now remember you want to be delicate around the sensor, not being too aggressive with the heat. But we will see the uh, resistance change when we do the next test. Now just to show you when I had it on here for a second, now the heat gun is on low. And we can see the value does continue to drop as the sensor does heat up. So we know that it is operating correctly. Now next moving on to test the potentiometer in the inside of the airflow meter here. Now with this test I'm going to show you here, uh, there is also another test I'm going to show you how to test it, but with this first test here I have read various opinions online which some say it is good to test it this way, others say that you'll get a false reading with it. Now, the further open the flap is, the uh, difference in reading will have, and you'll see that the reading does change. 
So just to show you how this works here is we'll go to prong number seven and prong number six here. Just to hold it on there, just making sure I'm not blocking the meter. And to show you what the difference is, again, we'll be on the same setting as we did have when we were testing the sensor there. So it was the 1000 reading. And you can see it does increase, but we will find that there seems to be some flat spots or there possibly could be some uh, dirty spots or worn out spots in that uh, contact there. So once you have this plastic cover off, you can see around the outside edge here, there is silicone that holds it in place. So basically what I did here is I just went around the outside edge with a razor. I didn't cut it all the way through just to ensure I didn't scratch up this cap or scratch up any of the casting. Then I took a flat screwdriver and just slowly pried all the way around. You can slowly hear the silicone breaking. And then once it's free, you can just remove it by hand then. So we'll look at the potentiometer once we're inside here. You can see I already do have the uh, voltage meter hooked up here and what I'll be doing is just going to the uh, the 10 setting on the voltage meter so what I have here is a small 9 volt battery I have a connector on here and basically what I have done is put two connectors on the end here um, they weren't spade connectors unfortunately because I didn't have any on hand so I did just modified a couple round connectors still kept the uh, insulation arms so I won't have any shorting out here and I connected them to the fir two first terminals which are numbers six and nine so once we're inside here now you can see i do have one of my test probes hooked up to the main arm going on the top here and next we'll be taking the other test probe and we're going right to this spade connector on the inside there and you can see it does change the voltage reading here now before we do start we want to check the voltage on this nine volt battery to ensure when we do do this test with the potentiometer when the whole arm swipes uh, what the reading will be so just do a quick test here now you can see I'm a little bit low here. It's not a fully uh, charged 9 volt battery, but will uh, 7.38 volts. So basically what happens here is we'll see a low voltage reading here when we start out. Now you can see it's only 0.13 volts. And then when we do open it up, you can see the voltage does gradually increase. Now just to go on the outside here, I can pull it all the way through. Now you can see when it's fully open, you'll see 5.85. Now there is to be expected uh, somewhat of a voltage drop because there's a fair amount of contacts. This does have to flow through, but in order to achieve maximum voltage or if you're seeing an extreme drop or even when you're doing the swipe, you do see uh, somewhat of a uh, different voltage reading. So you'll say it goes up, then it'll be a slight spot where it drops back down again, then goes continues to go up. What that is is either dirty points in the uh, contact here or there may be possibly some worn out spots there. Now just to show you a close up of the potentiometer here, you can see the black strip along the bottom of the contact where this arm does swipe on. Now again if you do notice some variations when you are doing the test whether it increases or decreases then there's hiccups along the way or there is uh, slight drops possibly this does need to be cleaned or even the arm does need to be adjusted in order to uh, achieve a proper readout. Now the resistance test versus the voltage test, I would recommend the voltage test. I just wanted to show you uh, how the resistance test did work and what the variation was in between the two. And again, as I found online, that a lot of people didn't recommend doing the resistance test. And uh, even after the end of doing this video here, I also wouldn't recommend doing it because you do achieve better results and a more uh, solid results when doing the voltage test itself and you can see when we did the resistance test you did see some uh, variations in the readout as we increase or decrease the swipe as opposed to the voltage where it was a fairly smooth along the way now the values on both sides here they may vary a little between what my reading is and what your reading is and that will be dependent on even if the contacts are cleaner or dirtier or even the 9 volt battery what the uh, final voltage is on that as well now you will always notice that there is a small drop in here as I shown you there was uh, roughly about a 1.5 volts to 2 volt drop down at the end here and again that's perfectly normal because we do have 
some contacts the electricity does need to be passed through and there will always be a certain percentage of droppage on there now if you do notice an excessive amount obviously there is a problem and uh, you will need to take the steps in order to clean this now there is a few different ways we can go about this if you are finding issues with the airflow meter and you can either have it uh, rebuilt you can purchase a rebuilt one uh, you can do the rebuild yourself which I'll be showing in a, another video or you can go ahead and buy a used one which possibly may have issues with that down the road but uh, it is a cheaper route than going ahead and purchasing a brand new one so this concludes the rest of my tutorial video uh, again as I mentioned before I will be doing a rebuild video on this just to make sure this is um, up to proper Bosch specifications so it does have the proper readout and my car does run properly now if you have any comments or questions please don't hesitate to post them below also please subscribe to my channel and like my video thank you for watching